Hello, it's Duncan. In the last episode, we discovered that the external pricing service we're using randomly fails. So today we'll write some characterization tests to help us understand and document the failures. And then we'll combine the power of tester and development with the composability of functional programming to retry calls when they fail. We had a cliffhanger at the end of the last episode. We'd configured a version of our main that talked to the actual value of client talking to their test server here on 8080. And when we ran that up, most of the time that was fine, we'd get prices. But if we refreshed occasionally, it would go wrong like that. But then it would be okay. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And it goes wrong. There seems to be some sort of intermittent failure in value of service. And we see that here that we're getting an internal server error when we talk to the machine. It's hard to judge how often that is. Looking at this, we've got 30 different items, so it's often surviving 30. But the problem is that if fetching the price for any item fails, then we get the whole page failing. So first of all, I think we're going to see how bad the problem is, write ourselves a test that at least documents that and is maybe something we could run to show them that they have a problem. These are our tests that talk to their actual server. And whilst these are a value of contract, so they inherit these tests here, we can also add specific tests. So let's do that. Fails sometime. So this is just exploratory testing. I think maybe we'll sit in a loop. We'll say 500 times or so. Let us go to our fixture, which we will have if we make this an extension and fixture. And then we could say the fixture has a client and we'll ask it for the price for an item we believe exists. So that's a found item, there we go. And let's try that. And if it fails, let's print the failure. And if it succeeds, let's print the price. So let's run just that test. Okay, let's have a look. So it's mostly succeeding, mostly succeeding. Oh, there we are. Fail, fail, succeed, 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 fail, 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 fail. Well, that's quite a lot of failure really, isn't it? Let's see if we can work out how much. What we can do is instead of catching exceptions ourselves, we can ask result for K to do it for us. So we say a result from this block and that block is this invoke. And then if we map that rather than for each, then our results will be result type of either the price we got back or an exception. What can we do with that? Well, we can partition it. We can say result dot partition and the predicate we're going to give it is it is success. What's this? Let's ask it its type. That's a pair of List of result and list of results. That's the, these ones will be the successes and these ones with failures. So we could probably destructure that into successes, failures. Now I'd like to know that when it succeeds, it always succeeds the same way with 709. I could do that by saying assert true successes, all of them, it is success and it value is our expected price. So let's just try running that. Well, that's a relief. At least it's not returning randomly different values. Now let's have a look at how bad it is. Our success ratio is the successes size divided by our failure size. And we want something floaty, so we will convert one of these to a double. And let's just print that for now. And run. Well, there it looks like we only had two failures. Let's give ourselves a bit more to work on. Phew. Let's try that. Well, apart from my dodgy spelling, it looks as if 
one in a hundred or so is failing. He said that was a lot worse. Try again. That was one in 50. Well, we're getting a feel for the size of the problem. I'm not sure here I'd really want to test to fail depending on that ratio. So I think we've characterized it. Let's leave this alone for now and think about what to do about it. Well, first of all, we should probably get in touch with Value Elf Tech Support and let them know that they've got a problem. But even if they would fix that problem straight away, we know that we're talking over the internet and these things fail. Sometimes routes fail, networks fail. So we should probably find some way of mitigating this in our code. And in fact, it's quite useful that it's failing often at the moment because that gives us something to test against. Now, I think faced with this sort of ratio of success to failure, the simplest thing we could do would be to retry until we get a success. Now that can be a bit of a risk if the failing service is failing because it's overloaded, because we risk overloading it even more, but it's the simplest thing that could work. So let's give it a go. Let's remind ourselves what the value of client code looks like. And you can see that we could just put a little loop in here. If we get an unexpected response status, we could try again. That though wouldn't be very reusable, be very specific to this client. Given this client is actually a function, we should be able to do better. We should be able to decorate the function in order to allow it to retry. Let's do that from the ground up with the test. Okay, so I've created a test and retrying feels foundational, so I've put it in our foundation package. What should our first test be? Well, well we don't have to retry. So returns value if no exception. And we'll use that test to drive the interface to our function. So we're going to start with a function that we're going to wrap. So we might have wrapped, and that's a function that takes a string and returns a string. We can implement that with a Lambda to just return it. It's the identity function. Why are we using string to string when what we actually want is item to price? Well, the answer is that it's just easier to test with strings. So you don't have to create items or prices. Now what we want to do is convert that function into one that does the same thing, but retrying. So what we want is retrying, is retry, taking that function. And if we tell IntelliJ the signature that we want for that, which is the same thing, then we can generate this function. And these types are okay for now. But what I will do is pull it out of the test here because this is the thing we're going to make our production code. So we'll make it public as well. Now we don't just want this to work on any string and string, we want it to work on any two types. So we want there to be the type that goes in and the result type. And this wants to be the type that goes in the T and this wants to be the result type and it will return a function with the same signature. Now this needs to return a function type. So we'll do that as a Lambda in here. So we'll say return a Lambda. That function will take whatever our T is. And in order to get this test to pass, all we need to do is call the function on that T. And when I say get the test to pass, actually it turns out I haven't specified an assertion, which was naughty. So let's put that in there. Let's say that if we call our retrying with banana, then we should get banana. Let's see whether that's true. Totally good. Now in order to test the retry, we need a function that will fail the first time and succeed the second. Let's give ourselves a test. Now what I think I'll do is I'll make this a little bit general. I'll say we've got some sort of countdown which is say one and is variable. And then this function will say, if my countdown and then decrement it equals zero, I return it. Otherwise I'm going to throw an exception with error. Now I expect that to fail because I haven't put code in to the retry to actually retry. Let's just check. Well, I'm right about that. And at simplest here, this function can say try function catch any exceptions and if i get one try to call the function again and use that value let's see whether that works good now it would be nice if we could configure the number of times that it retried say retries if more than one exception so we could set this to two so we'd get two exceptions and then the string returned we run that, it should fail. Now we probably don't want to sit in an infinite loop here. 
So we want to specify how many times we should retry. So we're going to change this function signature, and I'm going to add retries, which is an int, as a default value of one, and is a default parameter. And move that up and see what we get. So now we can specify retries equals two in here. And let's use it in here by initializing a countdown, sit in a loop, and then every exception, we will decrement the countdown. And if that goes to zero, we'll rethrow the exception. Now, our problem here is that we're not returning a value. So we may do our trick of converting this to an anonymous function and returning from the middle here. And we have to specify the return type as R. Finally here, we need to put in the test. I might have got that right first time. Let's see by running the tests. Well, that's gratifying. We should probably check the edge case of having retries of zero. We're going to pass retries is zero into there. And then this should be assert throws with the legal state exception from the error. When we try and call, see whether that's right. Good. And we should get a similar situation every time the errors is greater than the retries. So now if we specify retries is one, but we throw twice, then the exception will leak. Good. Now, while it's nice to have automatic retries, we might also want to know when those retries have happened so that we could log or raise events. So I'm going to add a little function to this that's called when an error happens. I'm going to call it reporter. And that can be a function that takes the exception that we caught. And as far as this function is concerned, does nothing to do with it. So it returns unit. And we can default that to a function that does nothing. Let's go and add a test for that. Maybe take this one here. And this is going to be reports exceptions. How will we know? Well, we can set up, say, a mutable list of the things that have been reported. And then in here, we can say, when you report, add the exception to that list. This, in fact, can just be the reference. And when we've got this right, that add should be called one for every exception. There are two of them. So we can say, get the error messages, should be two of them. If we take the reported exceptions and get every exceptions message, this should obviously fail because we haven't put in the code. But if we change here to say, if we haven't thrown, we want to give the exception to the reporter and check that. Wonderful. And while we're here, it's worth noting that deliberately chosen to only catch exception here rather than throwable. And that's because the error subclasses of throwable, things like out of memory error, we almost certainly don't want to retry. Okay, looking back up then, we keep on repeating this code just with different countdowns. So I think if we were to pull out, say, exception count, assign that into here, and then take these, we could make a method out of it. Maybe call that succeed after. And if we've done a good enough job, then IntelliJ will see that it could use that in all the other places. And then we can just inline that again. And for symmetry, we can use that at the top as well with a zero. Just check that we're right. Good. I'm not sure these signatures are communicating anything after the first time. So we can get rid of this. Oh, and here it doesn't know the type of this lambda, but we could replace that with succeed after one. See if we're right. And we are. And now finally for this session, let's go and use our retry in our value of tests. So we could duplicate this file sometimes. I call this retry prevents failure. And now instead of invoking on our client, 
we can create a retrying gland where the function was the previous gland. And now we can use retrying gland in here. Let's try running both those tests. And you see for the first one, we had two failures and the second one with the retries, we have no failures. And now we can change this test to say that we have no failures. Which is true. Now, if we do this enough and the failures are random, then sooner or later we'll get two on the trot and retrying once won't be enough. We could up the retry count to solve that problem but sooner or later their service will be down or something like that. So we're still going to have to deal with the fact that this call can fail because it took across the network, but at least most of the random failures in the value of service will be mitigated this way. I think we'll take a break now. We could check this in. The tests are communicating what we've learnt, but we haven't actually changed our production system, so it should be safe to push. Just before we do though, maybe we'll just take this and use it in our test main to see whether that solves our problems. And now we should be able to refresh without the errors we were getting before. As is traditional, we'll have one last run of all the tests. And you can trust me to check in. In the next episode, we'll look at what to do if the value of service is actually completely down. If you'd like to see that, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this, then you'll almost certainly enjoy the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook. Details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.